know the classification of crystalline classification of crystalline solids the first is covalent crystals this first of all this classification is mainly based on the constituent particles or the force the difference in the type of force that binds the constituent particles if you suppose if it is atoms that are binded then with what type of bond if it is molecule or if it is ion or how it is how the constituent particles are binded to one another this is what is bear this is on which it is the classification is based for example as we have seen now this is first crystalline solids the covalent uh, crystals covalent crystals means the basic point is it is the intermolecular force that is binding force the binding force of the binding force is covalent bond the binding force is covalent bond as the binding force is covalent bond now the molecule or the crystal as a whole may be conducting may be conducting or non conducting for example you take the case of graphite diamond these are the best examples of covalent crystals in the graphite the constituent particles are in both graphite and diamond in both graphite and diamond the constituent particle particles are carbon atoms carbon atoms now in both graphite and diamond as you know very well that in graphite the carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized and in the diamond carbon atoms are sp3 hybridized and there exists a covalent bond but as you know that graphite is graphite is good conductor but whereas diamond is non conductor right so like this but in both graphite and diamond the binding force is covalent bond it is a four orbitals four electrons in the valence shell that will be, that will involve in the bonding right here the carbon atom other four carbon atoms are attached like this and here it is hexagonal structure in the case of graphite this is what is covalent crystal means the next is the what do you call molecular crystal in the case of molecular crystal so now second is molecular crystal in the molecular crystal means constituent constituent particles are molecules constituent particles are molecules like in the case of ice it is water molecule in the ice the constituent particle is molecule that is water molecule then dry ice the constituent molecule is carbon dioxide as you know very well that in ice the binding force is hydrogen bond the binding force is hydrogen bond so like this in every molecular crystal either hydrogen bond or dipole dipole interactions van der waal force like this different types of physical forces 
in the molecular crystals the binding force is the physical force like hydrogen bond van der waal force ion dipole interactions dipole dipole interactions any of these sort of physical forces will exist and again this molecular crystals molecular crystals may or may not be conductors right that depends on uh, the how the, the arrangement is right this is molecular crystal then next we'll see about ionic crystals third one is ionic crystal in the ionic crystal the constituent particles the constituent particles are ions and the binding force is the what do you call uh, coulombic forces of attraction it is the force of attraction coulombic force or interionic force it is the force of attraction between two oppositely charged ions for example sodium chloride crystal cesium chloride crystal right or zns cf2 so on and so forth and we have many 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 types of crystals that all we we'll discuss in future i mean in the coming lectures in all this one ion is attached to different other ions how they are arranged and all that in the crystalline structures we are going to discuss but definitely all the ions are due to strong coulombic forces due to strong coulombic forces all ions are strictly attached to their particular positions like this the lattice will be like this so as a result what happens is neither any ion nor any particle like electron or proton are able to move along the crystal lattice so these are not conductors pure crystalline solids are not conductors and the melting and boiling points are also the melting points are also very high for them melting points are high they will possess crystalline solids possess high melting points and they are non conductors this is about ionic crystal in brief of course more about ionic crystals what we are going to discuss in the chapter in this chapter now in the coming lectures then next what we have is another type of crystal that is interstitial crystals right in this interstitial now in the interstitial crystals is what we are going to see now metallic crystals is more important metallic crystals the particles are metal atoms and the binding force is metallic bond the binding force is metallic bond for example sodium metal potassium metal gold zinc iron copper so on and so forth in all this different sodium atoms are held together in sodium metal lattice different number of potassium atoms are held together copper atoms are held together in a copper lattice copper metal so in this the bond is metallic bond the metallic bond again we explain in different ways that is also we have, we consider as a covalent bond one type of a particular covalent bond where the free ions of the metal free electrons of the metal will form a pool and uh, will move along the vacant orbitals and will form a strong uh, interaction attractions between one atom and the other atom so these are the metal atoms are the constituent particles and the metallic bond is a intermolecular force that is a force that binds each metal atom together and all metallic crystals are conductors 
all are very good conductors so this the reason for the conductance of the metallic crystals is there is a, there exists a large number of free electrons if the very basic point the very basic characteristic property of the metal is to have unpaired electron and free or vacant orbitals due to the presence of unpaired electron and due to the presence of vacant orbitals all the unpaired electrons of each metal atom will have free space to move and so they will move from one atom to the other and will be keep moving in the entire lattice as a result they are good conductors this is a basic classification of crystalline solids covalent solids molecular solids ionic solids and metallic solids the interstitial solids of course that makes that a uh, interstitial solids is not necessary to be considered as separate because that is interstitial solids are formed due to the defect in the crystal sometimes in the vacant spaces some foreign atom will get embedded that in the defects we discuss about this how different foreign atoms will occupy the interstitial solids and what difference in the properties due to this occupancy which results in stoichiometric and non stoichiometric defects that is entirely a separate thing but that is not necessary to be considered under classification but definitely that also makes certain difference as far as the classification is concerned but that is that will come under again part of each and every this major classification so this comes to the now completes the classification of crystalline solids the next is in the crystalline solids what are the different types of arrangement in which this atoms or molecules or ions can be arranged and for any crystalline solid first of all what are the basic physical parameters we have to discuss first what is the related terminology here the whole arrangement of atoms or molecules or ions in this in any of the crystalline solid is what we call crystalline lattice then what is crystalline lattice what is unit cell what are the different different types of unit cells this all now we discuss